Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jessie Leons. This edition's top stories, government assures that it has not allowed a housing development to compromise St. Lucia's World Heritage Site. Educator Angelina Paul used to be sworn in as the ninth member of the Upper House. And the Boys Training Center achieving new milestones 60 years on. St. Lucia's World Heritage Site has not been compromised. That is the assurance from the government of St. Lucia after concerns were raised over the erection of a private dwelling house at the base of the Pitons management area. Minister for Physical Planning and Parliamentary Representative for Soufre Fossejac, Honorable Herod Stanislas, issued a statement on Friday, 18th September 2020, clarifying the details of the development. Honorable Herod Stanislas, Minister for Physical Planning, states that in 2016, his department became aware that property within the Peters management area had been sold to a Canadian developer during the tenure of the previous administration. This came to light via an application submitted in September 2016 to the Development Control Authority, DCA, for a touristic proposal for an acre of the area with a concept that included a long list of amenities to be built. Today, a private dwelling house stands at this site located at the base of the Pitons, much to the concern of many citizens. The government of St. Lucia assures that it has upheld regulations for the site, even turning down the original plan of the Canadian developer. Honorable Stanislas explains. The technical staff at the DCA conducted an assessment and appraisal of the proposal and made a recommendation for rejection of the plans submitted by the developer. The staff of the ministry made these recommendations on the basis that the proposed development site falls within policy area one of the Pitons management area and according to the design guide of the limits of acceptable change study of 2013. Which means that our administration rejected the initial plans of the developer due to the fact that it was not in keeping with the rules which govern the area. The following year, the DCA responded favorably to a second proposal submitted by the same applicant which fell within the guidelines of the Pitons management area. The developer was granted approval in principle for land use and concept to construct a one-story single-family residential building on 2,846 square feet in the same area. This was a completely redesigned structure which the DCA advised had met the criteria of the LAC study. Hence, approval was granted for a structure which keeps to the guidelines and aesthetics of the area. The approved construction is in, area, is in an area which had already featured an estate house. I wish to make it clear that at all times, the DCA and the Ministry of Physical Planning have been monitoring this development to ensure it is in keeping with the guidelines. As regards to this property, at no time has the DCA approved any new development within the no-build zone of the Peters management area. Honorable Stanislas reassures the nation that the Department of Planning and the DCA has abided by the laws and rules governing the Peters management area and at no time was any aspect of the development in question approved that would threaten St. Lucia's World Heritage Site designation. Retired lecturer and Denry native Angelina Ferropolius has been appointed and will be sworn in as government senator in the Parliament of St. Lucia at the next sitting of the Senate. Ms. Polius joins the Senate as the ninth member of the Upper House, replacing Senator Timothy Mangal. Ms. Polius holds a bachelor's degree with first-class honors in education from the University of the West Indies and a master's in new literacies from the University of Sheffield. She is currently pursuing a Doctor of Education with UNICAF University in Organizational Change and Leadership. Cumulatively, she has over 30 years of service as a teacher and was a lecturer for almost 13 years at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College Division of Teacher Education and Educational Administration. Currently, she is an e-tutor and course coordinator and a research supervisor in the Master's in Literacy Instruction Program at the University of the West Indies Open Campus. Angelina Ferropolius will be the fifth female senator of the Upper House. 
The government of St. Lucia has thanked outgoing Senator Timothy Mangal for his service and contribution. The Boys Training Center, BTC, is this year celebrating 60 years of service to the nation's young men, providing protection and direction to them. The BTC has recorded success with its intervention program. We hear more about that in this report. The Juvenile Rehabilitation and Detention Center houses boys in conflict with the law, as well as those in need of care and protection. Over the last 60 years, the Boys Training Center, the BTC, has evolved in its service offerings to wards. The institution has therapy sessions, technical and vocational programs, agriculture, and sporting avenues. A source of pride is the musical band sponsored by the Amy Winehouse Foundation. Wang Songson is the general manager of the BTC. We have agriculture, we have auto mechanics and welding, and we have woodwork. Um, sometime last year, we decided, well, two years ago, we decided to try for the Caribbean vocational qualifications. This is something that had never been introduced to Boys Training Center. We had never had a boy prior to this come to Boys Training Center and leave with a certificate. Um, the first boy was assessed for level one welding and he passed and he also went on to do level two. Now this was a boy who was there for care and protection. But I'm happy to say this year we have two boys who are here as, as um, juvenile offenders and in August, which is last month, they were assessed in auto mechanics, in welding, sorry, and they both got level one um, passes and, and that was a major success for us. The sports program, Mr. Sonson says, has helped the center in transforming the wards, giving them new attitudes to life. Currently, a group of boys are making hits on the national under-19 rugby team. Last year, 2019, we took a group of 19 boys to Grenada to participate in a, in a football tournament, which is called the Caribbean Children Charity Shield Soccer Tournament. And out of teams from across the region, Trinidad, Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent, we were the only juvenile detention um, um, center there. And at the end of the tournament, we were able to get the award for most disciplined team. So that is a big step in, 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 in changing the stigmatization associated to the center. Mr. Sonson says the BTC receives troubled boys that staff must mold into productive citizens. Critical to that process is continued intervention. The center runs an aftercare program which involves job placement and housing. Massey Store St. Lucia, along with other private sector entities, Sonson says, have been of tremendous assistance. The involvement of former wards also inspires the boys. We had a program recently, um, it was called Being the Change, where we invited persons, probably former wards of the center, to speak to the boys. And um, I know that we invited a police officer who was a former ward at the center. Um, in conversation with him, he mentioned a customs officer who was here with him at the time. He also mentioned a prison officer. He, he mentioned a fireman, and he, he mentioned persons that are successful overseas. So there are a lot of success stories. It, it's just that it's a little um, and, and far between, but there are genuine success stories. But we find that the boys do best when they have the family support or when they have the, the support system around them. Because most of the boys who are successful, when they come to the center, we will know whether they will be successful or not. Because some boys would come here and they would be here for an extended period of time. You wouldn't see one family member coming to visit them. The Boys Training Center on July 23, 2020, received $50,000 from the proceeds of the annual Prime Minister's Independence Ball. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass-through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of kerosene has changed. The retail price of gasoline, diesel, LPG, 2022 and £100 cylinders remains unchanged. The price changes take effect from Monday, September 21st, 2020. Gasoline remains unchanged at $12.13 per gallon. 
kerosene decreased from $7.15 to $5.62 per gallon. Diesel remains unchanged at $10.78 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder remains unchanged at $28.36 per gallon. The 22-pound cylinder is also unchanged at $31.19 per gallon. The 100-pound cylinder, too, is unchanged at $169.44. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, October 12, 2020. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. We do the moon. You know we on a car. And you say the boy, please, my head pass, tell on the pass. And you are September from 2 p.m. Découvrez cette liste. Découvrez Paul. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol with Primus Hutchinson. Merci au temps, Jesse. Merci, Madame, département qui est responsable pour les formations en gouvernement cette liste. C'est GIS et Télévision Nationale pour la NTN qui a posé ton nouvelle Aquayol. Posé ton Primus Hutchinson. Representatif Parlement et ministre des Affaires Plan déclaré que quand ministre, quand yon ministre et yon natal de ville souffrie, il y a un grand respect pour place de héritage de ces Et Et j'ai assurance là qui lit et puis gouvernement cette ci en bas autorité qui est responsable pour contrôler le développement pays. J'ai suivi toute loi et règle qui n'est pour faire et puis ménagement place héritage de ces pitoins. On est avec Harold Stanislas de qui la pas jamais tenu yon temps à bien les côtés développement ça là te ka menacer place héritage plutôt en pièce façon mais c'est ça ne se fait comprendre qui il est important pour tout le monde comprendre qui l'histoire habitation qui a trouvé en région place déménagement plutôt en a des places qui connaît comme as le voir selon ministre des affaires plan et représentatif pour souffrir la tenu yon agrément pour terrain ça là vendre pour Grec de Business Hot Canada, par habitation Mondesi. Ça, c'était en janvier 2015, en bas administration gouvernement qui était en pouvoir de ça là. Selon le représentatif là, il y a une lettre qui date en mois d'octobre 2015, Grec Sala Hot Canada, et qui, premier ministre là, en ça là, qui aussi, c'était ministre des Finances, qui a cherché façon de soulagement. Et à ce lettre là, ça là, M. Sanislas Moutweki, avocat aussi Moutwe, c'est la main la famille Mondesi, Hot Sophie, qui chef business Canada a acheté propriété ça là pour te bâtir yon grand établissement pour yon la famille vivre et l'autre établissement pour faire mon faire vacances et pour aussi louer. Monsieur Sanestas aussi dit l'être avocat expliqué pour premier ministre là dit wata ça là pour savoir qui majorité propriété ça là trouver d'ailleurs place des restrictions qui près de place héritage de modèle côté la pas supposé ni pièce construction et pour raison ça là chef business là qui ne pour bâtir à son propriété ça là en façon qui qui préserver l'environnement après discussion ministère a dit qui responsable qui responsable client tu es satisfait et tu as gardé aussi agrément ça là le 3 octobre 2015 le 18 décembre 2015 grand chef business là a trouvé permission pour développer propriété par gouvernement cette ci de longtemps le ministre de la dit que c'est juste septembre 2016 que l'administration même venait de savoir de l'application de vote propriétaire. Selon le ministre, l'autorité a refusé l'application comme il n'y a suivre qui a gouverné avec l'autorisation de l'aménagement de la place des pitons. 
c'est ça le sens de Kawe qui, en mois de mars 2017, la tenue a l'autre application qui était faite différent et qui a suivi ces règles qui sont en place. Pour ça, le représentatif du Parlement, pour souffrir, il y a des choses qui ministère et qui ne pas jamais été approuvé. Pièce de développement qui a trouvé en place côté la part supposée de pièce de construction. Le gouvernement de Taïwan a apporté ses ports pour ville concept Gozile pour aider Chen l'environnement Rodney B. Net et Pop. L'ambassadeur de Taïwan pour cette ici, j'ai fait concept là, parce que concept Gozile a 5 000 dollars pour ça acheter bon zodi pour placer un spécial coin à commune Rodney B. Le maire pour ville Gozile, M. James Edwin, aussi vous avez là par l'ambassadeur de Taïwan pour cette ici, Peter Chen. L'ambassadeur Chen dit que il était très plein pour faire une présentation ça là, particulièrement comme celle-ci qui a continué à faire bataille contre la maladie de Corona. L'ambassade de Taïwan a déclaré que ça a bail les résidents de la confiance là, qui vivent là en cours encore à la meilleure condition pour vivre et recevoir les étrangers qui ont encore encore visité celle-ci. Représentatif pour Gozile Honorable Nadmont, tout. Oui, merci, ambassade Chen et gouvernement de Taïwan pour continuer pour assister celle-ci et conseiller les résidents pour protéger ces bombes qui ont été placées en ces spéciales coins à Rodney B. On va tout aussi conseiller mon public là pour placer bon intérêt en défense là pour montrer croyance en protection santé et l'environnement. Gozile. Et ça, c'est côté de notre bout de nouvelle, mesdames et messieurs. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie l'invitation. Je vous remercie encore. Si vous avez conservé la vie, vous avez besoin d'une autre nouvelle à quoi vous avez besoin. Je vous remercie pour cette vidéo. Jesse. Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming.